The emergency crews hadn't left the scene of the Colorado theater shooting before a lot of lawmakers, politicians, and members of the media were already asking questions about how gun laws have to change. But what questions about the shooting are the media not asking? Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. We're going to look at this debate from two angles. Tonight, part one, the questions the national media aren't asking. I don't need to go into a lot of details on the shooting because most every American is familiar with the basics. Police say 24-year-old James Holmes went into that theater in Aurora, Colorado. He was dressed in black, wearing a tactical helmet, vest, and leggings, as well as throat and groin protectors. Police say Holmes used an AR-15 assault rifle, a Remington shotgun, and a 40 caliber Glock handgun during that attack. And police say they found a second 40 caliber Glock inside of his car. The question being asked, how could he be allowed to buy those guns legally in Colorado? The question not being asked, how does an unemployed graduate student afford to buy them? Look, a decent AR-15 rifle costs $1,000 or more all by itself. The shotgun and the two handguns would easily run another 1000 total. Spare mags, sights, slings, and so on, you're going to run another 1000 across those three firearms. The bulletproof vest, that's easily another 800 bucks. And then you have all the money spent on bomb-making materials. Which brings us to our next question. As you know, police say that Holmes rigged his apartment with an incredibly complicated maze of fire bombs. But on the day he was arrested, he immediately told police about the bombs. Why? So our second question, where did this graduate student in neuroscience learn how to make a series of bombs so complicated that the FBI took two days to figure out how to disarm them? One official said the intricacy of these bombs is something rarely seen outside of war zones. He had a tripwire set behind the door to kill anyone who opened it. And yet, after setting this intricate death trap, decides to warn police about it before someone's killed? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Neither does what police are saying about this being a lone wolf attack. All the evidence we have, every single indicator is that this, was, this is all Mr. Holmes's activity and that he wasn't particularly aided by anyone else. But is that true? Eyewitness reports from the scene indicate that Holmes got a phone call from someone inside the theater. And also that tear gas was thrown from more than one location. He got a phone call and most people when they get phone calls in theaters, they go straight out into the lobby to answer it. This person went, went directly to the emergency exit. He had his foot propped open by the door and from the crack it looked like he was signaling somebody or looking for somebody to come his way. As I was sitting down to get my seat, I noticed that a person came up to the front row, to the front right, sat down, and as credits were going, I know it seemed like he got a phone call. So he went out towards the emergency exit doorway, which I thought was unusual to take a phone call. From what we saw, he wasn't alone. He had someone with him uh, because the, the second can of tear gas didn't come from his side. So what you need to know is that there are so many questions about what really happened in Colorado. Questions we don't have answers to when we may never have answers to. What is unfortunate is that instead of really digging into why this apartment would be rigged to kill, but then Holmes would then warn police and then lawyer up and not say anything else, where he got the funding and the firearms training, and these eyewitness reports that there was more than one person, yeah, instead of asking those questions, national media want to focus all their attention on why guns were legal in the first place. National media seems too busy playing the political game, not busy enough looking into what really happened. And that is Reality Check. If you'd like to make your voice heard on the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXAX. And I would think a lot of people have those same kind of questions that you were raising. We were talking about this as soon as it happened. That's right. If, did, did he act alone? You know, was the door propped open? Did he do all of this? He was just standing there afterward. There's so many unanswered questions. A lot of questions. And remember the very first day, a lot of people were asking about this cell phone call. Supposedly he got a call from someone mm -hmm. and then got up and walked out. So, you know, whether these questions are easily answered or not easily answered, media should be asking them, yeah, police should be explaining them. Every single indicator is that this, was, this is all Mr. Holmes's activity and that he wasn't particularly aided by anyone else. Well, I noticed the guy walked in from... Uh, into the auditorium, sat into the very front row to the far right, and he got a phone call. And most people, when they get phone calls in theaters, they go straight out into the lobby to answer it. And this person went went directly to the emergency exit to take his phone call, which I thought was unusual. 
uh, he seemed like he had his door, he had his foot propped open by the door, and from the crack, it looked like he was signaling somebody or looking for somebody to come his way. As I was sitting down to get my seat, I noticed that a person came up to the front row, to the front right, sat down, and as credits were going, I know it seemed like he got a phone call. So he went out towards the emergency exit doorway, which I thought was unusual to take a phone call. And it seemed like he probably pried it open or probably did not let it latch all the way. Soon as the movie started, somebody came in, all black, gas mask, armor, and threw a gas can into the audience, and it went off, and then there was gunshots that took place. From what we saw, he wasn't alone. He had someone with him uh, because the, the second can of tear gas didn't come from his side. Um, he was completely dressed in, in black, head to toe. From what we saw, it seemed like he had something over his face, probably to prevent him from breathing it in. And he, uh, I, we can only assume that someone got him in. All the evidence we have, every single indicator is that this was this is all Mr. Holmes's activity and that he wasn't particularly aided by anyone else. And what we need to do is change the way in which people think about guns, especially young people. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way.